I need to announce uh, for those of you who um, know her, uh, Mrs. Schultz has passed away uh, at about 9.30 this morning on Good Friday. <laughs> Mrs. Schultz passed away. She has been praying and asking the Lord to take her home. And uh, she has, she prayed that uh, um, she would get 100 years. And she had her 100th birthday and it was a great birthday party. And then she didn't know why she kept hanging on. But uh, <laughs> she hung on and almost made it to 101, I guess. But uh, the Lord called her home this morning. So it's very fitting on Good Friday morning. Alright then folks, on behalf of the Army Ministerium, I'd like to welcome you to our Good Friday service where we can come together to commemorate um, what Christ has done for us, his sacrifice. Just so you know, um, on your way out when you're leaving, if you have an offering you'd like to give, uh, there is a basket on a chair by the door. The offering will go towards covering expenses for today's program. So, you know, and then, yeah, we'll get the, uh, the excess of that will go towards the other way, the Lax and Teddy's food bank. As well, if you do need to use the washroom, um, they are just outside and to your, to your left and down the hall of it, okay? The scripture reading for this morning's welcome comes from Psalm 133 and verse 1, which I'll read in your hearing. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. I think that applies to when we come together and together as well. Regardless of faith, community, or denomination, we can all remember and be grateful for what Christ has done for us. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads together as we pray this morning. Father God, we are, yeah, from all different backgrounds and locations, but we all are, do believe and are grateful for your sacrifice for the fact that we can have eternal life because of what your son did that, that, that Friday, so long ago. It wasn't a good act, but the value, the repercussion has been good for all humanity. And we are grateful for the plan of salvation. As we go through this morning's program, may our thoughts be turned heavenward in gratitude for what we have because of what was done. This we pray, Lord, through your spirit and your son's name. Amen. I wonder if we should introduce, especially the guy to your right. I think that makes sense. That it's good for us to do. Um, this is our song leader and uh, participant for today's program. This is his first year as a member of the ministry. This is his first month as a member of the ministry <laughs> representing the Evangelical Free Church. And it's Kurt Korskian. I know I said that wrong. And so he has advised me just to call him Kors, which is fair. But Kors will be, um, yeah, leading out with us today and leading out with the singing. Can we please give him a round of applause? I appreciate it. I should introduce myself. You think so? so? You don't think they know who I am? <laughs> well, just, you're a memorable guy. That's true. I do. Yeah. Well, there we go. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am Ian Andre Harold Bramble the first, and I am the pastor of the Onaway Seventh Day Adventist Church. So you think that's impressive? We actually have a young man here who's actually the sixth of his family name. So. That's not me, though. Uh, my name is Chris White. I am the pastor of Bridge Valley Community Church. I'm Brian Seward. I'm pastor at Onaway Baptist Church. And playing keyboard here, we have Glenda Foster. She's, well, you know who she is. <laughs> oh, and Brad and Brittany. There's, we could go around. Lots of people helped make this all happen. So we yes. thank you all for helping to make this happen. So. Okay, so if everyone could please stand for um, singing, if you are able to do that. Uh, we'll start by singing, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Trust your, trust your mind. <laughs>
moved, we will be reading from the Gospel of Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and, and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples, and he found them sleeping. Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not keep watch just one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. So the one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and uh, lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi! And he kissed him. The man seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing nearby drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion that you've come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man, wearing nothing but a linen garment, was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. Then he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple, and in three days we'll build another not made by man. Yet not even their testimony did, did agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men bring against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You were also with that Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about. And Peter went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she again said to those standing around, 
This fellow is one of them. And again he denied it. After a little while, those standing around near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He again he began to call down curses on himself and swore to them. I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word of Jesus, that Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests, with the elders and the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they're accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply. And Pilate was amazed. Now it was a custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was imprisoned with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him, but the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Jesus or have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then uh, with this one you call king of the Jews? Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and he called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And then they began to call out to him, ha, Hail the king of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off his purple robe and put on his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. So, uh, if you could stand again to sing two more songs, we'll start with Gold Rugged Cross.
passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with, mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. The written notice on the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him from among themselves. He saved others, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also hurled insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when the centurion, who stood there in front of Jesus, heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, yeah, Surely this was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger, and Joas and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him from Jerusalem were also there. It was a preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus was already dead. When he heard from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some linen, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, Mary the money, mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. It's always powerful to go through the actual story, the, the recording of what Christ did for us and how it played out. We are going to close with um, a song from Stephen Crowe.
saw the sons. They walked beside the young road. The reason that they came was to watch the lamb. Daddy, daddy, what will we see there? There's so much that we don't understand. So I told them of Moses and Father Abraham. And then I said, dear children, watch the land. For there will be so many in Jerusalem today. We must be sure the land doesn't run away. Then I told them of Moses and Father Abraham. Then I said, dear children, watch the land. When we reached the city, I knew something must be wrong. There were no joyful worshipers, no joyful worship songs. I stood there with my children in the midst of angry men. And then I heard the crowd cry out, Crucify him! We tried to leave the city, but we could not get away. Forced to play in this drama, a part I did not wish to play. Why upon this day were men condemned to die? Why were we standing here where soon they would pass by? I looked and said, even now they come. The first one cried for mercy. The people gave him none. The second one was violent. He was arrogant and loud. I still can hear his angry voice screaming at the crowd. And someone said, there's Jesus. I scarce believe my eyes. A man so badly beaten, he barely looked alive. Blood poured from his body, from the thorns upon his brow. Running down the cross and falling I watched as he struggled, I watched him as he fell, the cross came down upon his back, the crowd began to yell, in that moment I felt such agony, in that moment I felt such loss, until the Roman soldier grabbed my arm and screamed, you! I tried to resist him, then his hand reached for his sword. And so I knelt and took the cross from the Lord. I placed it on my shoulder and started down the street. The blood that he'd been shedding was pouring down my cheek. They led us to Golgotha. They drove nails in his feet and hands. And yet upon the cross I heard him pray, Father, forgive them. But never have I seen such love in any other eyes. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. He prayed, then he died. I stood for what seemed like years. I lost all sense of time until I felt two tiny hands holding tight to mine. When children stood there weeping, I heard the oldest say, Father, please.
Please forgive us the lamb ran away. Daddy, daddy, what have we seen you? There's so much we don't understand. So I took them in my arms. And we turned and faced the cross. And then I said, Dear children, watch the land. Thank you, Dan. And thank you to all of you for joining us here for our program today. Uh, we are going to close at this time. Let's bow our heads for prayer once again. <clears throat> Father God, it's only gratitude that we can be fully up for. It's with gratitude that we're here this morning, that we've taken part in the program, that we listen once again the account of the sacrifice of your son. Our only reasonable response is to live every day thinking of what has been done for us and living lives worthy of that sacrifice. Lord, we ask for your guidance in making that happen. May we truly give our wills over to you that we can do what we are called to do. Thank you, God, for being our Lord God. This we pray through your spirit and in your son's name. Amen. Thank you once again for joining here today. We just ask that as we leave this place that you continue to uh, keep a respectful atmosphere and a thoughtful atmosphere of what God has done. And we also ask that you would please join with us in packing up the chairs as we clear up the, uh, the area. Thank you once again. You take care and God bless.